Hi everyone, so welcome to Investing for Value. So I'm going to talk about the four ways to make money from the stock market. It kind of talks about like the different levels of investing um, that's available for everyone. So like everyone can invest in the stock market. The one thing you need is time and patience. With that, you can invest in the stock market, whether you have the knowledge or you want to do the work or you don't want to do the work, you know. Um, it's about looking at the different levels. So let's start off the first one. So this is a passive way of investing, like index funds. Um, this is for people who have like a, you know, like in the US it's like a 401k or if it's in another country you have your own system. Um, and you basically just put your money and you allocate it to a certain fund. So you can do index funds which has proven over time that it gets you on average about a 10% return but re in the like past 8 years um, you have gotten like 20 to 30% return annually which has been an incredible return um, so how do like index funds work why do they work over time like how can you just put your money in there and just get a really good return so like the theory just comes out of this that the the overall the index fund index funds are a whole collection of the top companies like in terms of usually by valuation um, and they usually go like this like so like it will usually it will usually as it rise you're kind of like buying more so that's why your retirement's kind of like sketch um like put that way like you constantly contribute money towards it so you're kind of averaging up and down as you go. So say like you start here, um, and then as the stock market goes, you're kind of averaging um, up and down as you go, but as you got here, um, you know, like people who are retiring up here, you know, it's really good for them because they're getting uh, quite a big upside, but you must be asking what happens when the market drops and we have a recession, which is, you know, always been the case. It's always been every five to eight years, but this time it hasn't, it's just been extended. Um, so it's still a question of when does it drop, but like, but as it still goes with the same theories, right? If you even when it drops down here, you're still buying. So as long as you keep buying here, you're averaging down a lot. Um, and as shown, like the companies usually just get more valuable as they go. Like usually through like um, inflation. Um, it's also through like companies just getting bigger these days like as globalization happens Companies just get bigger and bigger and bigger like you look at Facebook Google Microsoft Amazon Like those companies don't get smaller. They just get bigger and bigger um, so that's kind of where the um, like how the index funds just grow bigger and bigger so like if you're buying right here so the, the one thing about index funds is you don't necessarily have to pay attention to the companies in there, you just have to pay attention to the amount of money you put in there and, and on what basis. So if you if you contribute money like steadily, like say like you put $50 every week, you're kind of averaging in and out as you go. Um, so like over here you're averaging, averaging, averaging and then you might be buying at a higher price here. Um, but the thing is, when no one can tell when the market's at its highest. Like, if you could tell when the market was highest, you could just like, up here, you could just sell out. Um, but you, no one ever knows, and um, some, you know, like, some people will say markets are at its highest, but, and then they just continue to go higher. Um, so it's a matter of, you know, like, you can't judge these things. So if you just keep buying on a consistent basis, like every week or every month, um, then over time, it kind of just averages out, and you end up in a really good place, like, even like if you if you were buying a lot down here and then at the next cycle it comes up right here usually the peak is usually higher than the previous one so like after 10 years that's usually higher and after 10 years that's usually higher again um, so and that's just how the stock market has usually worked because the companies in the index fund like you imagine like top 500 companies like in like say S&P 500 um, the companies have just gotten more valuable and more valuable and usually um, Companies that don't get valuable, they kind of just get kicked out of the S&P 500 and a new one takes its place. So it's kind of made so um, your top companies are in there and and usually if they're the top companies, they're building more value and more value and more value. Um, so that's why index funds work. 
because you're consistently putting money in there and usually the companies are growing larger and larger and larger so like you don't really have to spend a lot of time on it like usually at the start you need to like look at it and go like what am i investing into like if you're investing in s p 500 then you can go okay is that the 500 largest companies what's in there um, and then from there you can get a really good idea after that you don't have to look at it again really um, like not on the same basis like you can as I write here you just have to spend like one hour of fortnight one hour of fortnight should do you just check where your progress is at if the money you know like if you're steadily contributing um, yeah just like 30 minutes a week just to check it where it's at or you don't even have to check it to be honest um, you can let it just grow because index funds just work by themselves like you don't have to have you know like any control over it just make sure you're paying one low fees low f like fees make a huge difference so make sure you've got the lowest cost provider um, and generally like Vanguard or something like that is usually the lowest cost provider so you can do really well with them because it's actually shown like if you pay like the difference between one to three percent fees um, it's a substantial amount of money. It's easily, um, if you paid 1% fees versus 3%, you could end up with double the amount of money over like a, you know, before you retire, like over a 30 to 40 year period. So it really pays to like look for something with low fees. Um, that's giving, at the, end the, at the end of the day, index funds don't change. Index funds are index funds, right? Um, you're still buying the same companies. That's the beauty of it. You're not paying anyone to pick these companies. You're just paying someone to put them together. Um, so that's why index funds are really good if you don't know what you're doing and you just want to invest your money. Like a lot of retirement savings are actually put into index funds and just um, they're just built up over time and they usually do very well for people, assuming you have the time. Um, like I'd say you want to you want to at least have at least a few years or if not longer like usually um, they say you have to wait about like six months before you see really good positive results so um, of course market cycles are like five to eight years so you need to actually have enough time sometimes to be able to ride out a cycle um, so but I mean anyone can start and it's very simple these days it's even easier because there's so many different platforms out there that um, just they're set up you can go online you can put money into them uh, or if you've got like a retirement like account that you want to like allocate your money to and you don't know what stocks to buy then I'd heavily say buy index funds even like the one of the best investors in the world Warren Buffett says invest in index funds he's like if he ever quits Berkshire Hathaway um, he would just advise his family to just put his put their money in the index fund over just putting like picking and choosing companies so that kind of that's a big endorsement from one of the best investors in the world um, so if you if you say I want a little bit of a higher return like index funds might return you on average 10 15 percent around there so like if it's higher that means markets are just doing really well like past eight years markets have done really well and you've been getting above average return but it's gonna like one day like if it drops it kind of corrects itself like on average you know um, so looking at this if you if you don't know if you don't have much knowledge then you want to go for this um, but if you if you have a bit more knowledge and you go I can I can then like look into companies and I can do my own research if you've got some time um, then you can this definitely works like uh, of course, so I put two weeks, two hours a week. But I uh, like initially when you're learning, you need to probably a bit, spend a bit more time. But after you've learnt, then after that, it's just a matter of just like again consistently investing in these companies, but buying at low prices. Like at the end of the day, companies pay a dividend, but you want to make sure you pay a low price for the stock, so your dividend is higher. And you also want to make sure this company. Um, has consistently increased its dividend. Don't let like, don't let a yeah increase what a one-off increase of a dividend like tempt you. Make sure it's always consistent. Like if it's consistently rising, um, then you know you can invest your money into the stock, and then you can just like let it sit and just click the dividend. 
and or you can also do both because you, some dividend stocks can grow like 10 20 percent a year um like in terms of like the stock price so you can collect your dividend and you can also um sell out at a higher pricing which is really good um but you know it depends on the companies usually you're looking for like if you're looking for dividend type company you're looking at like utilities like say a power company or something like that something that has like a it knows how much money it's going to earn and usually it's not like growing quickly and it doesn't need like a lot of cash immediately so it can just like click the money pay it out to you um, and it's really straightforward and usually those companies are very stable companies uh, of course um, your ability to do well with dividend type companies is the price you buy it and also the growth that they can grow the dividend at um, so uh, yeah, like at, at the end of the day, dividend companies aren't, aren't too complex and the risk isn't too high, assuming um, you're buying a company with a good uh, history, um, it pays dividends steadily and, you know, like, you know, it's usually got a good management team. If you can research those, check that, and then, every, and then you basically just have to spend a little time uh, just maintain, just updating yourself on the company just to check if anything's changed and then from there I don't think you have to spend that much time on it um, you can just sit back and take your checks um, but of, of course you can always be a bit more active you can always like put up a watch list of companies and then check what kind of um, like yeah like what kind of stocks are selling cheaper like if you can find a stock that's had a temporary you know like um, drop because some stocks will then you can actually buy into it and then buy it at a really cheap price like sometimes like most dividends you get like two percent or something around there but like if a stock dropped by like half you could just like easily get like four percent or something like that which is really good or you can even even get higher if you look into stocks like it, it depends on your like moral code sometimes it's like you can buy stocks that are in these like um like not so moral industries like say like tobacco or something like that or gambling I and mean, then they usually return a lot higher dividend but it just depends how you feel about them um, these days we're a bit more conscious we want to look after the environment we want to be a bit more moral so then you may you might have to give up a bit more of some return uh, but not always the case i've found a lot of like good companies like say like insurance companies finance companies they pay good dividends and they grow well um, so they're usually quite good um, so I've got this chart here how does a dividend type company work your traditional dividend company usually it starts here and then as you get closer to your dividend uh, the price builds up and then once the dividend is paid out it drops back to a similar level assuming it hasn't grown um, and then as your dividend gets up and then it drops once it's paid out so it's usually like that so like uh, unlike the index which constantly rises like that um, different type stocks go like this then drop go like this then drop so that's kind of your traditional type of dividend play um, and then if you feel like a bit more you want a higher return but it comes with higher risk as well um, then this is uh, like growth companies right so growth companies are the companies growing extremely quick you want to find companies that are growing 30 percent plus and in a, in a fairly good industry with a really good competitive product no no point buying a company that's not going to have repeat sales if a company doesn't have repeat sales it's pretty difficult for it to remain consistent and uh, if it doesn't get like if those sales aren't repeatable then they're always spending so much money like trying to market themselves and get more people in the door so you want a company that's um, going to be growing quick so like in the past Netflix was a good grower Amazon was a good grower Apple was a good grower you know um, and in those companies did really well uh, and that's where like for index funds you'll be looking at like 10% here you're looking at like 20% here you're looking at 30% plus um, so it kind of you can kind of see what kind of returns you can expect over time um, Like when I say here like dividends isn't high, but usually it's coupled with a capital gains tax as well Like dividends might be two three percent and then the extra seven might come from the increase in price over time um, That's just straight out from the pricing 
Um, here, usually no dividends at all. Um, and you're looking just for the share price to go up. And usually 30% is, well, you know, definitely doable with these growth type companies. Of course, you gotta buy it at the right price and things gotta kind of go in its favor. But usually if you're long-term, um, the gains are actually real, quite substantial. Um, so like if you look at Beyond Meat, like it was a company growing at around 200%. Um, and then you know like the if you were an early investor you would have your your gains would have been in the hundreds of percentages um so that's usually quite good or like if you're say like recently tesla has been doing really well if you got like 200 300 400 dollars you know you'd still be doing very well like minimum like 40 50 percent like if you just got in like a couple of months ago or even higher than that so like that's the type of growth company you're looking for like they produce a really competitive product that people other people want to buy and it's got that long term um, long like it kind of like advantage it's got a competitive product and you know it's just going to continue to sell more so that's kind of what you're kind of looking in your growth products right that they've got a product that sells it's you know people want to buy it not just now but also in the future and then they've got expanding production to meet that demand um, and also that they're run by a really good management team that's always trying to keep ahead of everyone else um, so that's kind of like I, I put around about five to ten hours because when you're investing in a growth company you kind of really want to be on top of things like usually because of the volatility like initially it's a lot it's really time consuming looking at that um, but of course once you buy it you can just sit and wait like if, if I brought Tesla and then I just left it there and I don't have to look at it for a, quite a while like if I'm if I'm a long-term investor yeah like I could leave it for years and I wouldn't have to spend any time on it so like you don't necessarily like the initial phase you have to but after that you don't necessarily have to um, so I'd say like you have to look at your risk level and how like how often how quick do you need the money if you like you need the money within one like within two years i'd say um here's probably a better idea if you need it within five years then here's a better idea if you've got at least if you've got like like you don't necessarily need five years but i'm just saying like if you get into these hard companies um you might have to be prepared to wait for a little while um, or else you might end up selling at a very low price because these stocks are very volatile um, So I've included also this fourth option here, which is options like options if you don't understand options They are basically a contract that gives you the right to buy or sell at a certain price um, So like let's just let's just go with call options which gives you a right to buy at a certain price so like if you're buying it if you say like a stock is at $10 and you want to and you buy an option at $15 um, strike price you still have to pay like a premium but at a $15 at $15 strike price um, the premium is usually quite low and then say the stock rises by 15% then it means your stock is in the money and usually the options are you know like people are willing to pay you a lot of money to buy that contract off you because um, it means there's a you know like if, if the share price continues to rise, say like it rises from fifteen to twenty dollars after that, um, then there's a substantial upside. Like you usually with options, like if you do well, you can earn like hundred percent, like in like weeks, days, sometimes. Um, like so, but that extremely risky. Like and and it also comes of like they also come for expiry periods. Like. I don't advise options unless you really know what you're doing. Um, even even then, like um, it's such a big timing play, but you, you most people don't necessarily like most people don't need it. Like if you just want a bit, if you if you want a good gain, just go for a growth company, buy the stock. You can own the stock forever. Uh, whereas you buy options, it's gonna expire. Um, so unless you're really onto it. Um, like I, I'm probably saying you know like you probably need that you'd probably need 20 hours a week where you're really onto it and you're looking at the price and you know what's happening with the company um, that's going to be ahead of that you know something's coming before the expiry of this of the option is that's the that's the problem like if you've got an option that's going to expire in a week 
um, and you've got a ten dollar stock and it needs to reach twelve dollars, uh, what what tells you it's going to reach twelve dollars? Or sometimes you can buy longer options that last for months, um, and of course you can do that as well. But you know it's it, that's kind of like on your ability to be able to tell. Um, is anything coming in its way? Of course, most people that uh, buy options are generally people who like to trade in and out of stocks, so they're trying to read the technicals and all that. Um, but I don't, I don't really advise this option, like unless you're really experienced in st like these stocks. Like you have to be really experienced in these two areas already before you should get into this area, because it it only takes a, a very like a small mistake, and then you could lose quite a lot. Um, so like that's a slippery slope but I'd say like look at your risks of course like literally they go from here to here as being like safest to riskiest this one's quite safe like it's something that most people can get into like if they don't know the stock market well they can still get into it and they can slowly learn as they go um, if you've got more knowledge you can get into dividend stocks with a little bit of growth that's always advisable um, and if you're young um, I definitely go like go growth stocks. Growth stocks just have so much potential. You've got the time to let a stock run and you know like really build a lot of gains for you. So I'd say that. And if you're just someone who's just like really ambitious, you really want a high return in a really short amount of time, then options are also a way to go. So like op like here I drew a graph here. Like basically options have a starting price up here. And you know, as as the expiry date comes in, it slowly comes down like that. And then, but if you the minute your option gets like in the money, like say like that fifteen dollar strike price, um, it's in the money. Um, all of a sudden the premium just goes up by a lot, like a lot, lot. Um, and that's what's really nice about it. But if that never comes along, it just comes down and it just goes basically to zero once it expires. So you're looking at a product that expires um, and you know like you just have to look at your whole knowledge base, do you have, to, do you have the experience, do you have the knowledge, do you know how to actually look at these things. Um, so like if you don't know, they have much knowledge here, if you have a little, if you have a lot, definitely you're, you know, you're, you're in, in this area, you can definitely put a bit more gr like growth in your portfolio. Uh, but of course, if you're like retiring, then maybe you're, you you want to pull back to these two areas. Uh, but if you're young, you're here. Uh, of course, if you're young, you can also give these a try. But you know, like I think you don't need it. Um, as Warren Buffett puts it, like um, if you're dumb, then you have no business in these things. And if you're smart, you don't need you don't need it. Uh, so like you you know he kind of puts it in a way that. It's not something you need. Um, like these three categories are more than enough for you. Um, so like, of course, you know, you're, you're an adult, you make your own decisions. You, you see what your risk profile is, what money you can afford to lose. Um, so that's kind of like how you should be looking at yourself. Um, in terms of myself, like to talk about a bit, I, um, like I, I don't do index ones. Um, they're a bit too slow for me. I've done some dividend stocks, but even then, a little bit too slow. Like I and I like my companies to really grow quick. Um, like even like so, in saying that, there were some really good retirement home companies where they paid some dividends, but they grow really quick. Like kind of like growth companies. So like you can buy companies of growth and dividend, and that's a really nice mixture if you find the right ones at the right valuation. Um, I tend to focus on these growth companies, as you can kind of see, like m on most of the videos I post, I'm looking for these companies that grow like 50% plus, and that's kind of what interests me. Um, so because I've got the time, I can let it stay there, and it just builds up over time, and the, usually the returns are really nice. Um, and I and I used to do some options, but I don't really do options that much. I just like. I just like some peace, I like some quiet, I like, you know, like, I don't need to be able to time these things. Most cases, it's very hard to time, like, unless you know the stock well, and it's got the momentum. Like, kind of like Tesla right now, like, if, when Tesla was, like, having its momentum, like, you could kind of judge it like that. 
Um, but with some stocks, it's pretty hard to judge, and it's about timing with those. So like um, here, I'd say like if like Virgin Galactic would be something that's got a lot of momentum in it right now, um, and it might work with options. Um, but still, I've just gone with here. I've just gone with the stock kind of option. Um, and then I found, you know, like thing, you do not have to go to options. You can just go over here. Um, of course, you just see where you're at and do what you're comfortable with. At the end of the day, don't do something that you just don't have a lot of knowledge about. Because, like, your ability to judge if something successful or not really matters. And, like, so, like, here, yeah, like, so you can see the charts, how the fluctuations go. So here the fluctuations are big, uh, but that this is like for like decades, right? Um, so like yeah, like but generally you you don't have to watch this too closely. And here like you can the fluctuations are pretty predictable. Um, and here like this is assuming the growth company is successful. It's like it kind of has like these troughs, and it takes for kind of a long time. But once it does well, it kind of pumps up, kind of like Tesla. Um, where it's just like sliding in and out from here and then boom it goes really well and then you've got your options where it either comes down here which is binary or it goes up um, so that's kind of just like four charts of like a pure the pure plays of if you were to get in the stock market and how you would make money from those if, not, if you if you have any questions just let me know below or if there's any stocks you want to check out or if there's any one of these options that you're like well no pun intended um but if there's any options that you are interested in and you don't know like say you don't know enough about index funds or dividend stocks or growth stocks or options um then you can always just ask me some questions like i don't claim to be a very like a big expert on these things so i can just give you a general opinion if you do need the right advice, then possibly a financial advisor might be a better option. Um, but if you, yeah, like I hope you enjoyed this, and yeah, like if you stayed to the end, good for you. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about these things. Um, yeah, yeah, well, and yeah, basically, you just have to assess your the amount of time you have. If you're busy working. Um, you might not have the time to get into these areas, so you might just want something a bit more consistent. But if you have a bit of time, and you, if you're young, I definitely advise this area here, um, or here as well. If you like, if you're if you're young but don't have the knowledge, here's good because it really helps you understand what you're investing into. Um, and then, but like most people I find is in here this category of in index funds, and they usually do quite like do quite well over time, like for decades. You. Sh you should have a pretty nice retirement like next day if as long as you're contributing um, consistently and you haven't like your hopefully your retirement isn't at this point here like hopefully it's always a, it's around up here so that's why it pays to like time your retirement and go like oh you know like if you're investing in the, if you think you're retiring around possibly here you might want to think oh the market's doing really well I might just like take my money out here or if you can afford to keep your money through this little cycle, usually this cycle is about two years, um, and then it builds back up. So, you know, like you just have to look at things, assess how much your time frame, and you, that's usually uh, one of the biggest uh, factors towards your success how much time you have. Um, until then, well, good luck investing.